Hey, kid, you looking for your parents? Uh, no, actually, I'm on a uh, pilgrimage to a famous mountain. So if you don't mind, good sir, I would just like to pass. You shall not. Uh, I see. Uh, well, this, this is awkward. How about if I just squeeze past you real quick? I would squash you like a bug. No, um, well, uh, how, about a, how about a peace dance? It's just a little cultural dance that we can perform to signal mutual trust and respect. Yeah, so, so just real quick, so it goes up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. What? I've already talked about which historical arms and armor would make the most sense for fantasy dwarves. Link below if you haven't seen that yet. So what about someone else who's also rather short, but not necessarily as gifted in the warrior department? Hobbits, halflings, maybe even gnomes. I'm just gonna lump them all together for the sake of convenience. And I'm gonna be talking about them in a kind of broad, generic sense, not a specific setting or system, like not D&D in particular, or Lord of the Rings in particular, just kind of short people who are not quite as stout as dwarves, shall we say. All right, so if you're a little short, there are basically two ways of dealing with it. One is compensating. The other is leaning into it and making the best of the strengths that you do have. In the case of dwarves, there is an argument to be made in favor of compensating for their lack of reach with longer weapons. So something like spears, pole arms, uh, large two-handed axes, swords, things like that. I don't think that works the same way for gnomes, because they're just not quite as physical as dwarves. For one, dwarves are usually known for having high constitution. They're tanks, you know, they're broad and stout, they have thicker bones and, and who knows what. They can take a beating and they don't need to be that mobile. They can armor up, they can form a shield wall, they can stand their ground and go toe to toe. In case of halflings, or gnomes, I don't think that's a great idea. There are some systems where you have subspecies or types that do get a bonus to constitution, typically not as much as dwarves, but generally when I think of hobbits or halflings, I don't really think of them as people who are, are like super stout and can tank hits. So what do you do when your strengths are not strength, but rather charisma, agility, and stealth? Well, first off, ditch the armor altogether. Not even light armor. You know, even if there is pretty decent leather armor or whatever, it's, it's not worth it. Because even if it's fairly light, it always hampers you somewhat. It always restricts your mobility. It adds bulk. You know, HEMA gear is a good example. It's all light. It's meant to be light because what we're simulating is unarmored combat. So you have various plastics and rubber and just modern material. It's not supposed to slow you down, but I can tell you full gear is awkward. Even if it's light, it's still cumbersome. It's hot for one. And also it always restricts your range of motion to an extent, there's just extra bulk. You don't move quite the way you normally do. If there's some kind of enchanted clothing or armor that moves the way clothing does and doesn't hinder you whatsoever, but still protects you, of course, that's a good option. But otherwise, I think the best policy is just don't get hit. Easier said than done. So speed and agility are paramount. Evasion over defense. That also applies to weapons. First, I'm gonna talk about a few swords that would make sense and one that you might think could suit a halfling well that I disagree with, and then move on to the weapons that I really think would be perfect. Sting actually makes a lot of sense in this case. You know, yeah, you can say if you're already short, why would you pick a short sword? Because now you have even less reach. By the time you can finally reach someone and cut them with your sword or stab them, they can punch you let alone they have an actual long-reaching weapon. A short, light weapon, or maybe even two, is just easier to move around with, and nothing can slow you down. Nothing can get stuck somewhere. You need to be able to just do a quick in and out. Some of you dudes are already used to that anyway. Now, moving in close, where you risk getting into grappling against a stronger opponent can be extremely dangerous. They can't get a hold of you. But if you're short and fast enough that they won't, you just dance around them and you, you slip when they try to reach for you and you just 
you know, go in and just stab. When you're past the, the effective reach of their weapon, you're good. You know, for example, especially if you're dealing with someone who has a polearm, you know, once you get past the head of the polearm, you manage to evade that and, and slip in. Now they can't do much of anything other than grab their own dagger and you're gonna be faster most likely. So this is also where a blade like that comes in handy because thrusting takes less force than cutting. It's also more effective against armor. I mean, that's what this is all about, thrusting into the gaps instead of actually dealing with the armor. So yeah, sure, crawling around on someone's back may not be the most dignified thing you can do, but it's not gonna be quite so funny when the halfling starts jamming his blade into your armpits, is it? Before we go on, here's a quick shameless self-promotion my Patreon and YouTube memberships. I've been working on adding some more extra content that I put out for supporters, like live streams, extended ad-free edits of videos, behind the scenes stuff and other vlogs, and occasional instructional HEMA videos. So that's available for your perusal, as they say, if you're toying with the idea of supporting the channel. Also, I just teamed up with Gamer Subs after they sent me some of their products to try out which I enjoyed. Uh, not so much the waifu stuff, that's not my style, but these uh, drink mixes here are quite good. There are versions with and without caffeine and a bunch of different flavors. And also, sus snacks. Sus stands for sustainable. These are so good that I've already eaten all of them, except one, over the course of, what, two weeks? They also have tea and other stuff, but instead of babbling on, I'm just gonna link to an unlisted video in the description below of my first impression of some of this stuff. So if you're interested, you can check it out. If not, let's just go back to the video. Now you could argue for a rapier with a narrow blade like this because it's light, fast, gives you plenty of reach, and is still very effective in the thrust. It doesn't require a whole lot of force, but it's cumbersome still. I mean, there's quite a large guard, so it's not easy to carry, it's very long. You know, if, if you um, downsize that to halfling level to, to maintain the same proportions, it's still quite a bit. If anything, a small sword would be better. It's just a shorter rapier, more compact as well. That would work quite well for dueling, at least for dueling other hobbits. And uh, overall, I think that would actually be a pretty good choice overall. Yeah, you're not gonna block and parry larger weapons with it, or larger opponents even, but you don't want to anyway. Your, your strategy is evade, ideally be undetected, you know, sneak up on them and shank them. But uh, if you can't avoid a, a direct confrontation, you need to be as slippery as possible. And for that, a small sword works quite well, even though it's normally a very gentlemanly weapon for open, honest dueling it would also work in the hands of a rogue. For a sword with a longer blade that has plenty of versatility, I think this Hanjian would work quite nicely because it is extremely light. It has a longer handle, so you can use it with one hand and uh, the handle acts as a counterbalance, but you can also use both hands for more powerful cuts. As said, you know, a halfling is not going to generate a whole lot of force compared to plenty of other species in uh, fantasy scenarios. So cutting may not always work that well, but there are gonna be some situations, you know, sometimes you face something even smaller than you, some kind of monster or who knows what, and then you might need cuts. This is gonna work well. It's great for thrusts too, and it's reasonably easy to carry. Not as easy as a short sword or dagger, but it's not a problem. All right, so the type of weapon that I think would be perfect for halflings that I don't usually see is this. Sickles, commas, uh, war picks, things like that. Why? Well, there's just nothing else that makes it quite that easy to do horrifying amounts of damage. Just mechanically, I don't think you can beat this. The kind of leverage you're dealing with here and the absurd amount of force that's being concentrated at the end of this vicious point cannot be overstated. This is much, much easier than cutting with a sword or even stabbing with a dagger. This annihilates armor and penetrates deeply into all kinds of material. And if a halfling needs to climb up on a large monster to find a weak spot, Shadow of the Colossus style, this becomes a climbing aid. Until you get up and you jam that sucker right into the eye or some 
gap in the, the dermal plating or who knows what. And when you're dealing with much taller enemies, what's the best target for you to exploit? the legs. Depending on the height difference, you might be able to reach the legs if you just crouch down real low and you cut their ankles or, or the calves or, you know, the hamstrings, which is kind of a big deal. You could hook around the leg and slice. This is perfect. Just imagine there's this tiny rogue sitting in a tree somewhere waiting for the target to come by and then drops down and slams the point of the sickle down onto the head or the neck or... Ooh. Yeah, it's not great for defending. There's not much to catch an enemy weapon with. The hands are exposed, but we've already established that you don't want that anyway. Evasion is the main defense here. If for some reason the halfling absolutely has to fight a duel, can't avoid it, a hook shield like this would be quite useful because it's fairly light. It gives you a whole lot of protection, you know, particularly when you're shorter. This covers almost everything. Basically, it covers from the center up to the head and then down to the thigh maybe. And uh, when you're that short, who's gonna target your legs anyway? It's not really much of a concern. In fact, you can probably hold it higher to make sure that your head is perfectly safe. And um, there you go. And then combined with maybe uh, something with a longer handle, some kind of war pick or sickle, that would work quite nicely. What about ranged weapons? Bows, I think, would be suboptimal. Just think about how much shorter the draw length would be. And that's really what you want. The longer the draw length, the better, because the more time there is for the arrow to be accelerated by you know, whatever draw weight limbs you have. And that's the other problem. They're going to be not going to be able to draw quite as heavy as humans or orcs. So the bows will be much weaker even against humans, let alone a species with significantly higher constitution. Sometimes halflings are shown with slings, like in Heroes of Might and Magic. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, sure, the, the output is reduced, not as powerful as when you're stronger and taller, have longer arms, but at least slings are very easy to carry. So going with the philosophy of you need to be as agile and stealthy and quick as possible, that works. You just roll it up, stick it in your pocket. You can pick up some rocks you find. So yeah, it's not bad. If you want sheer damage output, it would probably have to be a crossbow of some kind. Now that's still difficult when you're this compact because crossbows are kind of bulky. You want the prods to be fairly long. Otherwise you're limiting the effectiveness. The shorter the prods are, the shorter the draw again, which means you have to crank up the draw weight quite a bit to get not a whole lot out of it. So yeah, it, it works, but it's not fantastic. So joke or not, this would be ideal for halflings. When you're talking force multiplier, how can you beat this? You only need enough strength to hold it for aiming and to handle the recoil. That's it. And it is an option in some scenarios. You know, you have gun artificers in D&D. I've made another video about that. If that's not an option, what would be the next best force multiplier aside from magic? That's always an option, of course. Well, all you need is something enough to pierce the skin of whatever the target is, you know, whether it be humanoid or monster or whatever. So a small compact self-cocking crossbow like this one here, or a bow, or throwing weapons, or a blowgun even. Yes, smaller lungs, but with poison, as long as you break the skin, it'll do something. Even if they're tall and dangerous and have natural armor, a poison blowgun dart to the eyeball might do the trick. And of course, daggers, again, for the same reason. So that's about all I've got. Hope you found this entertaining. Thanks for watching and take care, folks. Check out my other videos too.